Dr. Standish, you, you recognize this? That's a, a beautiful instrument. Yeah, a beautiful Apple iPod. And I've got pictures of my kids in here. And would you believe it or not, Dr. Stanish, I mean, look at this. This little tool that we can buy in, in a computer store or in an electronic store actually holds one of the keys to whether or not God really exists. Did you know that? Who'd have thought? Yeah, who would have thought? And you might just start thinking that if you stick around for Out of Thin Air. I want to welcome you back to Out of Thin Air with Pastor Sean Boonister of It Is Written Television. This is our fourth and final session, and I want to find out, have you enjoyed yourself? Have you learned something here? Has it been good? You know, these are questions. We began with the idea of great questions, asking questions, and we haven't had a chance to answer them all. I know that there hasn't been time for that, but at least there's been an idea about what questions to ask. The answers have guided us and maybe started us on a journey. So I want you to welcome right now Pastor Sean Boonstra for this special fourth session entitled Out of Thin Air. Four meetings isn't very much. So, so fa fa fast, and I know people are saying, I, I didn't have enough yet, and I wanted to learn more and study more, and the truth is, so do I. Uh, there's so much more we could study. We could go on for 20 years every night on this subject and probably not hit the end of it. So here's the good news. Wherever you are right now, um, in a church group, wherever you're watching this, you happen to be sitting with people who love to study this kind of thing. And so it doesn't have to end with meeting number four. You can go on. The people around you like to discuss it, and uh, they love to study the Bible. And there's all kinds of things that you can study and talk about. And where you are, perhaps somebody will tell you about the things that uh, you can study there in that group or that church, wherever you are. And on top of that, I know a lot of people say, I have so many more questions. What else can I study? What else can I read? Here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to post some of the better books that, uh, that I have read and, and some of the ones, for example, that Dr. Standish would recommend at our website, thinairevent.com. You go to thinairevent.com, there will be books there that you can study and keep reading and keep digging into this thing, no pun intended. Well, it's night number four. Our subject is Out of Thin Air. Let's bow our heads for a brief word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for loving us and for giving us intelligent minds that can ask good questions. It's our desire tonight that we would hear your voice and that you would bless my thoughts in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's do a very quick review of some of the things that we've touched on. And one of the things that I really want to quickly review, because it's a really, really fascinating thing, I want to go back to night number one and look at Thomas Aquinas. You remember that name, Thomas Aquinas? One of the theologians years and years, centuries ago, that started wondering, how can we prove that God exists? And he kind of borrowed from Aristotle and from some of the other Greek thinkers, and he came up with a number of arguments. One of the arguments that we looked at was the argument from degree. We called it his second argument. It's really his fourth. He had five. The argument from degree, Aquinas said, this is uh, the argument based on morality. He said, how do we know what is good and what is evil? Nobody is perfectly good, nobody is perfectly evil, and we can sort of gauge sort of degrees of good and evil in people. Who tells us what is good and what is evil? That was one of his arguments. The argument for morality, somebody has given us a sense of morality and a moral code that the human race seems to live by. That was his fourth argument. I called it his second argument. His fifth argument, I called it his third, was the argument from design. He basically looked at the world, and everybody basically is familiar with this argument. He said, this place is so complex, so finely tuned, so perfect for life, it is obvious as you look at this planet that somebody put this together. It had a designer. It is just too complicated. And he said that basically without a microscope and without a telescope. He said that years before anybody could see what we can see in the heavens and down in the microscopic world. Now, very, very interesting point. These two arguments, the argument based on morality and the argument based on design, it turns out they're very intricately linked. Let me show you how those two arguments are linked. And I'm going to take you down a little path to demonstrate this. 
most of the ways that you and I measure time are derived from the universe. We have looked out into the universe and we've noticed that things happen with such precision and in such a regular cycle that we use it to define time here on Earth. We have seen a pattern in the universe. So we set our clocks by it. We measure time based on the patterns we see in the universe. So, for example, a year. A year is the time that it takes the Earth to go around the sun. It is roughly 365 days. It's not exactly 365 days. It's a little bit off, and that's why we have to have a leap year once in a while to kind of make up for missing time or added time. I can never remember which way it goes, and that's why in a year that ends in a double zero, you skip your leap year. Are you with me? Yeah, sure. <laughs> a year is the time that it takes the, sun to, uh, the Earth to go around the sun, right? Are you with me on that? That's where we got our year. Now, how long is a month? A month is the time that it takes the moon to go around the Earth. Literally, the old word was month, but month is not easy to say, and so we say month. It is the time, roughly 28 days, let's say, that it takes the moon to go around the Earth. We measure, we measure that time based on stuff that we see out there in space. Now, here's a very interesting thing. Just a side note. If the moon were not the density and size that it were, and if it were not out at 240,000 miles from the surface of the Earth, if it weren't in that place with that measurement and that density, it wouldn't do a very good job of holding our Earth's tilt stable. And our Earth's tilt is responsible for the seasons. That's why when we go around the sun, we get spring and summer. Very interesting to me that God promises Noah in the book of Genesis that seasons will always be stable and always be there. And one of the things God uses to hold the Earth in that tilt and keep it stable is the moon at 240,000 miles out. Very interesting point, but not my point at all. A month is the time that it takes the moon to go around the Earth. You see it? We measure stuff based on the patterns that we see. How long is a day? How long is a day? A day is the time that it takes the Earth to do what? Rotate on its axis all the way around. We say 24 hours. It's not quite 24 hours. Again, that's why we need leap years and so on to fine-tune the calendar. We have a year. We have a month. We have a day. They are all based on stuff we see in the heavens. Now, here's a good question for you. Where in the world do we get a week? Where does a week come from? It's not based on anything in the heavens. Some people say, well, it's roughly one quarter of the moon cycle. Well, why? I mean, why would we divide the moon cycle into four? What is there in outer space that we have observed that is one week long? There is absolutely nothing. It doesn't exist. If you want to know why we have a week, you got to go to the book of Genesis chapter 2 where it says that God created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh day. Now all of a sudden you have a week and the Bible is the only place that you get an intelligent answer for why we have a week in our calendar. Are you thinking about this? Are, are you with me? Okay, good. Now let's go back to our reasons for God's existence and think about this. Aquinas said morality tells us God is there. He also said design tells us that God is there, and those things are related because those two concepts appear in one of the most important pivotal chapters in the entire Bible. Those two concepts appear in the very same verse right in the very middle of the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20. The Bible says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Six days, seven days, there is the design. It says God made, gives us the reason for the week, tells us God designed it. And where is it found? Right in the middle of God's moral law. There it is morality and design hung in one of the most prominent places of the Bible. God's saying, listen, if you want to find me, it's not that hard. I'm going to hang the notice in the post office and in the town square. You can come and find me.